Okie dokie, friends. Two lessons left. Today it's all about derivatives, tomorrow it's all about area, then we review, and then the course is settled. On today's show, derivatives of polar curves. How to take a derivative of a curve in polar form. And the way we do this, you're not going to like the way we do this at all. What we do is we turn a polar curve into a parametric curve. And we do that because theta can be treated as a parameter. And so you're not going to like this, not at all. A couple of things we picked up in our last lesson. I mean, maybe you will. I don't know. It's the product rule a million times. So maybe you like the product rule. Who knows? Last time we picked up that x is r times the cosine of theta. That's our conversion from uh, polar to rectangular. And y is r times the sine of theta going from polar to rectangular coordinates. So a couple of things to notice. The first is that r is usually some function of theta. Some function of theta. And the other is that there isn't a whole heck of a lot of difference between having thetas there and having t's there. And so you could look at this as a parametric situation where the angle theta is the parameter. And if I'm looking to find the derivative of y with respect to x, well, that's the derivative of y with respect to theta over the derivative of x with respect to theta. Now, you may say to yourself, that's wonderful, except that it isn't. Find the equation of the tan line, tangent line, to r equals 3 cosine 4 theta when theta is pi over 3. Equation of a tangent line. Oh, I know how to find the equation of a tangent line. It's y minus y1 equals x minus x1 multiplied by the slope. And that's where the formula comes from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i got to know what x is and what y is. That's what I've got to know. So what is y? y is r sine theta, which means when theta is pi over 3, the y value by substitution is negative 3 radical 3 over 4. I'll let you verify that yourself, finding the cosine of 4 pi over 3 and the sine of pi over 3. x is r times the cosine of theta. So if we were to substitute pi over 3 for theta into that expression, we would get that the x coordinate at theta equals pi over 3 is negative 3 fourths. I'll let you verify that again. So now all I need is a slope. Well, how are we going to get that? Well, we're going to take the derivative of y with respect to theta. And the derivative of y with respect to theta, the product rule is so much fun. It's first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. But the derivative of the first, that's negative 3 sine 4 theta times 4. Similarly, dx d theta. dx d theta is... The product rule is so much fun. It's 1 prime 2 plus 2 prime 1. So, I mean, maybe you love the product rule. If you love the product rule, this is definitely your thing. 
And so the derivative of y with respect to x at theta equals pi over 3 is dy d theta over dx d theta. So we just sub in pi over 3 everywhere. That's 3 times negative a half times a half plus radical 3 over 2 times negative 12 times negative radical 3 over 2. You're like, my gosh, I don't remember any trig at all, ever. And if I had to do this on my own, I would explode in fiery rage. And that may be true. And what ends up happening is you get 11 radical 3 over 15. You get 11 radical 3 over 15. Uh, this is why... If the college board were to give you a question like this, they might use pi over 2. <laughs> it's just a little bit easier to work with. They may use pi over 2 or pi or something easier to deal with than pi over 3. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sick in the head. You are nodding your head in agreement. Find the equations of the lines tangent to the cardioid r equals 1 plus sine theta at the points where the cardioid intersects the x-axis. at the points where the cardioid intersects the x-axis. So I think to myself, self, where are the places where the cardioid intersects the x-axis? That happens at two values of theta. One would be theta equals zero. The other would be theta equals pi. Uh, it would have to be that way. It would have to be that way. If you are intersecting the x-axis, you're on the pole. If you're on the pole, your theta is either 0 or pi. It's the only way to do it. So what do I need? I need y in terms of theta and x in terms of theta. Well, y is r sine theta and x is r cosine theta. So when I'm looking for dy dx, I need the derivative of y with respect to theta and the derivative of x with respect to theta. Oh, really? And both of these are nice product rule problems. The product rule is so much fun. It's 1 prime 2 plus 2 prime 1. The product rule is so much fun. It's 1 prime 2 plus 2 prime 1. So you've got these things happening. At theta equals 0 whole lot of stuff drops out. Anything with a sine theta in it drops out. And we end up with a slope of 1. And now I just have to think to myself, self, when theta is 0, I know you just hit the pause button. Well, you wanted to hit the pause button so you could say, where did you get that 1? Well, think back. Sub 0 in for, d, for theta in dy d theta, and then sub 0 in for theta in dx d theta, and do 1 divided by the other. You're going to get 1. Uh, so now I ask myself, self, when theta equals 0, x is 1 and y is 0, and so we get that equation there. And then if we play the same game at theta equals pi, then the slope turns out to be negative 1, and so you get y minus 0 equals negative 1 
times x. How's that going to work when theta is pi? That's negative 1. No, it's not. Check that. When theta is pi, x coordinate, cosine pi is negative 1. 1 plus the sine of pi is 1. Yeah, that's it. Oh, x minus negative 1. Yes. X minus negative 1, and we've got it. So it's a lot of work to get a derivative of a polar curve. It's a lot of work, and that's just something we have to be ready for. So things to think about. Things to think about. One, I want the slope of R equals cosine 2 theta plus 2 when theta equals pi over 3, feel free to round to three decimal places. The other, I want horizontal and vertical tangents to r equals 2 minus 2 sine theta for thetas between 0 and 2 pi. Those are things that you should be able to do when we show up at class. And I am hoping to hear good answers from you at that time. All right. Wonderful. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.